It is the start of a new working week, if you will, and it's time to take a look at what the aviation industry has offered us in the first day. There is a new aircraft order, which is pretty large, coverage on Qantas and an expansion for Alaska Airlines, but beginning right off the bat with Air Canada that have announced that they're moving towards the Boeing 78710 with a brand new order for the largest variant in the series. As a result, once delivered, the airline will fly every model of the 787 Dreamliner as part of a real general move towards market-leading environmentally friendly wide bodies, which is something we're seeing industry-wide. These 78710s, alongside all previously ordered aircraft, are slated to replace some of its aging aircraft types and look towards maximizing growth for the future. A total of 18 78710s have been ordered, and they do have purchase options for a further 12, should they wish to activate them. So, very generally, it is up to 30 78710s. The 12 units cover the Canadian airline as they assess future fleet replacement and also demand levels, and would likely be activated with time if this was the direction that they wish to head in. With already 38 Boeing 787s in their fleet, including 30 787-9s and 8 of the smaller 7878s, the acquisition of the 78710, the largest model in the series, will give Air Canada a much-needed capacity boost on routes that it chooses to deploy this variant on once it is delivered. This very variant that I speak of can fly 6,330 nautical miles or 11,730 kilometers and carry up to 336 passengers depending on the configuration. The aircraft will be hugely important in growing the operations at Air Canada and certainly relieving some of the pressure on existing wide bodies. As no doubt Air Canada definitely wants to expand to more destinations but probably like a number of other airlines just doesn't have the available units to be able to do this. The 78710 opens up not only new route possibilities but does give them that additional capacity for required services and means potentially existing Dreamliners can shift off routes and head elsewhere. Comments from the president and CEO of Air Canada were, Air Canada has made investing in the passenger experience a core priority. Our experience shows customers greatly enjoy flying on the Dreamliner, so we are pleased to offer them a larger version of this popular aircraft, which will premiere a new state-of-the-art interior cabin design. As importantly, the 787 is highly fuel efficient and will generate operational savings, as well as support our sustainability goal of reducing emissions. On to another new aircraft acquisition, if you will, not in the terms of, say, a brand new order, but Australian carrier Rex or Regional Express has announced the acquisition of another Boeing 737 to enhance its portfolio. Delivery of another 737-800, which will enter service next month, does make this their ninth 737, and that tally is only set to continue growing. The 737 series has been something that's been hugely pivotal in really a shift of focus in terms of the business model at Rex in recent years. As you may recall, in the Australian aviation sector, Tiger Air did collapse. They were offering low-cost flights right around the country. And in a direct response to that collapse, Rex pounced on the availability it saw in specific markets to offer jet-powered services rather than with their existing Saabs. It meant that they could launch between major cities such as Melbourne to Sydney with the 737. Since launching these services and only continuing to grow them, Rex has competed with definitely well-established and backed airlines on these routes and has has enjoyed high passenger loads and also on-time performance, making them a favoured choice in an era where there's been a lot of criticism directed towards the national carrier, that being Qantas. Adelaide and Brisbane will now be a route pairing that is made possible thanks to Rex taking delivery of this new 737. That route is slated to commence on the 30th of October 2023. While this will be the ninth 737 to join the fleet, as I mentioned at the beginning, of this segment, Rex does want to acquire more 737s with time, although this will very much be permitting the availability of units as it does look to strengthen its domestic portfolio of routes and continue to build upon the success that it has enjoyed thus far. And as a lot of Australians would say, the more competition, the better.
Over to Alaska Airlines, who have announced plans to launch a new connection from San Diego towards Atlanta. The route, described as a coast-to-coast, adds to Alaska's commitment to San Diego as a very important city for them. By the following spring season, the airline will offer 37 non-stop destinations from San Diego to cities across the Northwest, California, Mexico, Florida, major islands of Hawaii, and the Northeast. Alaska says that the service is slated to commence on May the 16th, 2024, which will be right in time for the busy summer season. The newly announced service has been optimally timed to depart San Diego in the mid-morning and arrive in Atlanta in the late afternoon before returning to San Diego in the early evening thanks to the magic of time difference. It means that the Californian network from San Diego will benefit substantially with customers completing onward travel. And overall, the service will have an optimal daytime schedule. So, as per Alaska, not too much to complain there. The Vice President of Revenue Management and Network Planning said, We do want to provide our guests in San Diego the most non-stop options. Not only are San Diego and Atlanta popular destinations for leisure travellers, but both are also major business hubs. We're excited to connect the cities, especially since Atlanta is our largest unserved transcontinental market, from San Diego. And heading back to Australia, this time taking a look at Qantas, and, well, the news for customers just seems to go from bad to worse, definitely indicated in the continued share price falling and new guidance. Qantas has warned that airfares could likely continue to rise as fuel prices increase and become more and more unattainable. The Australian flag carrier noted that it would expect a 200 million hit to its bill for the year's second half as these fuel prices remain elevated. As a result of the hit being taken by the airline, they warn that airfares may very well continue to rise. Qantas has been under fire in recent years for the treatment not just of its customers, but also employees, with it being revealed that they did sack almost 2,000 employees unlawfully. These problems have really reached a tipping point, or a breaking point if you will, in the last month with Alan Joyce departing earlier than expected, and a shift at the upper level, so news of prices potentially looking to increase comes, if you will, at the worst possible time, when the airline is really attempting to restore trust, and while potentially a valid reason to increase the airfares, it's not something that will likely be appreciated. Qantas's incoming CEO, who released her first interview to the public last week, understood the position Qantas finds itself in, which is certainly very low in terms of perception from Australians. She did note that her efforts to restore the brand's image would be of paramount importance. If airfares were to rise, Qantas noted it would be to balance overall the recovery thanks to the higher costs and eventually look to towards making travel more affordable. Despite all of these concerns around raised airfares, calls for further change at an executive level to the group remain high, especially now with ex and current employees who believe that the direction truly can't change until more people are removed from their positions. That's going to conclude the first aviation news recap of the week. If you have absolutely any thoughts, please do let me know down below in the comments. I really do appreciate the support. Take care and be safe, and I'll see you next time at the exact same time for more coverage on the industry.